Father Sonny Sebastian, a Divine Word missionary priest. We have reached the end of the church year. Today is the final Sunday of the year, and as usual, we celebrate today the Feast of Christ the King, Christ as the Universal King. There is a great contrast between the readings. The first reading is from the book of Daniel, and the second reading is from the book of Revelation. These are what we call apocalyptic books. The word apocalypse comes from a, from a Greek word apocalypsis, which means uncovering or a revelation of something hidden. The books reveal the inner meaning of life and both were written for people who were suffering great persecution for fidelity to their religious beliefs. Jews in one case and early Christians in another. The books are full of hope and look forward to a day when God will come in triumph and overcome the earthly powers which cause so many evils and bring so much suffering. Today's first reading comes from the opening chapter of the book of Revelation and it's a hymn of praise for Jesus, the firstborn from the dead and ruler of the kings of earth. Echoing the book of Daniel, it sings, See, he comes amidst the clouds. It continues, Every eye shall see him, even those who pierced him, namely those who condemned him to death on the cross. All the peoples of the earth shall lament him bitterly both out of compassion for his sufferings and out of guilt in so far as their sins caused them. And in a way, it includes all of us, for it was because of our sins that he died on the cross. There's none of us who can say, it does not touch me. But as the Lord says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is and who was and who is to come. Alpha and Omega are the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. They represent the beginning and the end. Jesus Christ is, as Paul in the letter to the Colossians and John in his gospel tells us, the source of all that is, the Alpha, through him, the creating word of God, all things were created. And he is the Omega, the final goal for all creation. Every experience, every dream, every achievement is subordinated to this. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts will never rest until they rest in you, said Saint Augustine. This is another way of saying that Jesus Christ is our King. He alone gives meaning to our existence and to our life. The Gospel brings us to a totally different setting. Jesus has been arrested in the garden. He has been subjected to trial by his enemies and found guilty of the, cap the capital crime of blasphemy for equating himself with God. However, the Jews have no authority to carry out capital punishment, so they have to submit their prisoner to the Roman authorities. So Jesus now stands before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Palestine. Are you the king of the Jews? Pilate asked Jesus. It is hard not to hear a mocking tone in the question as Jesus stands there before him, a disheveled prisoner in his simple garment. Immediately, as happened before the Sanhedrin, Pilate experiences the power and dignity of Jesus. Are you saying this on your own or have others been telling you about me? Pilate was not used to being addressed like this, especially by one of his subjugated people. And it is a challenge to, to Pilate, the Roman, who come forward with the kind of firm evidence that was required by a Roman law court. Again, Pilate asks, now a little more respectful in response to the dignity and power he recognizes in Jesus. So, you are a king? If you say so, I am a king, Jesus answers. But Jesus goes on to explain what being a king for him means. 
He says, the reason I was born, the reason why I came into this world is to give witness to the truth. Jesus' kingship is not one of executive or coercive power. It is to open people's eyes to the real meaning of life, of their existence and that of the whole world in which they live. And he continues, Anyone committed to the truth hears my voice. They are words of challenge thrown to Pilate, to his Jewish judges, and even to all of us. And that is how one becomes a subject of this king, by sharing fully with him his vision of what is real, his vision of life, and to share his goals. To be subject to this king is to experience an extraordinary liberation and an exciting new outlook on life. Many see Christianity as a religion of bondage today. They imagine they have a greater sense of liberation by leaving the church. And we see that, we see that. But this is a distorted reading of the meaning of Jesus and his mission. No one is more free than the one who has seen the truth through the eyes of Jesus, his king, and who accepts that truth as the way of life in, his, in its fullness. I have come that you may have life and life in abundance, and the truth shall make you free. And so today, we celebrate Jesus Christ, our King. And not only our King, but the King of the whole people of the universe, whether they are Christians or not. We're all called to submit ourselves to this same truth, the same reality which governs everything. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of all things. Through Him, as the word of God, we are led to the throne of the one who is all truth and all life. May our prayer today be, our hearts will find no rest until they rest in Him. <laughs>